Hello everybody, it's Justin Atkins here for Creative Scrapbooker Magazine. Today I'm so excited to be sharing with you this birthday card I've created with some of my favorite products from Pink and Main. So let's get into some crafting. We're going to go ahead and start with the Birthday Candles Layering Stencil. This is a four layer stencil, so we're going to use each of them to create a fun little element for our card with these candles. I've also got some four inch mint tape from scrapbook.com that I'm also going to be using that's really going to help me out for my project. I'm gonna take an A2 size panel of ice ring cardstock by Pink and Main, and I'm going to bundle my tape onto the back into little pieces that it will make it able to stick to my glass mat. Now I'm gonna go ahead, place it onto my glass mat and secure it. I'm trying to line it up the best that I can with the grid system that's in place. So now what I'm gonna try and do is use my first layer of the stencil, which is just the body portions of my candles, and I'm trying to layer it the way that I want to make sure to maximize what I will be ink blending. I'm taking another piece of my four inch mint tape and I'm going to use this to do two things. The first that I'm going to do is I'm gonna use this mint tape once that I've got everything in place to secure my stencil onto my glass mat. This is a low tack tape and it's gonna work really nicely to hold that stencil in place. But the second thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a little bit of an edge in the upper left corner of my stenciling area. What this is going to do for me is help create an alignment corner as I'm switching between the different stenciling layers. So this is going to help me in order to get everything all lined up. I'm also going to go back in, use a little bit more of my mint tape to use as a masking portion for my card as well. Now I'm going to be using some Kitsch Flamingo Distress Oxide ink on the top row of candles and I'm just going to use one color, just get a nice solid impression as I'm ink blending with my foam blending tools. I'm going to go ahead and put that one away. I'm going to shift my mask a little bit and since we're working with the center area now, I cut my mask in half. I'm going to go ahead and cover the top row and the bottom row of candles just leaving the middle exposed. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab some milled lavender distress oxide and I'm going to repeat the same sort of technique that I did with the first color. Just get a nice solid layer of that color laid down. Now I'm just going to shift that bottom mask and move it to cover those center candles and I love that the repositional tack allows it to be moved quite easily. So now I'm going to go in with some Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink and repeat the same process for the other as I did for the other two candles and go ahead and just blend a nice solid layer. I really love how these colors are all working with each other and you're going to see in a second when I pull my stencil up how perfect that everything looks and everything is nice and lined up. Now it's time for the second layer and I'm using that alignment corner that I created to help nudge this stencil into place. And this stencil is gonna be used to create detail on each of the candles. So once it looks like I've got everything lined up, I'm using my tape for some masking, pulling out my picked Raspberry Distress Oxide ink and blending on top of that top row of candles. Once again, just a nice solid layer, no special ombre effects or anything. We just want that nice picked raspberry color on top. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to shuffle around my masking portions, pull out my Seedless Preserves Distress Oxide ink, and we're gonna go ahead, repeat the process, and get this all nice and blended. It's going to give us a really nice warm purple color for those center row of candles. Now, as you can see, my tape isn't really being cooperative because I put down so much wet ink onto that layer, so I'm gonna learn that it's just gonna be best to use my fingers to hold it in place as I place my final layer of Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide ink all blended down. Now for the reveal, you're gonna see all the detail on my candle and we can move on to the third layer, which is going to be the large portion of the flames for each of the candles. So I'm using my mint tape, tacking down that stencil, and then I'm going to pull out my uh, squeezed lemonade distress oxide ink, and I'm just gonna do another solid layer to blend on top of my stencil. This is really easy because they're nice small little sections. I just gotta make sure I get a nice solid impression with my ink blending. 
So I'm just getting everything nice and cleaned up. And as you're gonna see for a second, you're gonna see how those yellow portions of the flame look great. And it's ready for the fourth and final stencil in the birthday candles layering stencil. This is for the innermost part of the flame. I'm gonna go ahead and just ink blend with this, but there's a lot of options that you can use. So like I'm saying, I'm gonna use some carved pumpkin distress oxide ink for my blending, but you could really get uh, some fun with this. You could go ahead and you could use some glitter paste. That would be a lot of fun. You could also foil the inside of your item as well for the flames, and that would be a really fun technique. So there's definitely options that you can do to jazz your card up a little bit. But as you can see, my panel is all completed. I love love how those colors work and everything just pops so nicely. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my third largest die from the mod stitched rectangles and I'm going to place it in the center the best that I can onto my panel and we're going to go ahead and get this all die cut out. Um, and I want to go ahead and tack this down with my mint tape as it's going to help secure the positioning of that die as I am processing it through my die cutting machine. So of course, just showing how you die cut it on camera. I'm getting everything laid out in my sandwich and then I will go ahead and process that through. So now that my panel is all cut out, as you'll see, it's going to be ready to go for my card. I'm also gonna just tell you, make sure to save your scraps as well. This frame that I die cut the section out of will be great for a future card, so be sure to keep that on hand. I'm gonna now go with my Primo Metallic Watercolor Accents, and I'm going to use the Mid-Tone Gold, and I'm just gonna get everything nice and mixed up, and I'm gonna splatter some of that gold metallic watercolor onto my panel. I like to do this to kind of jazz my card up a little bit. Gives it a little bit of a fun glitz and glam feel, a little bit of an extra thought put into it. And who doesn't love a little bit of shimmer on their card, you know? I'm gonna go ahead and set my panel off to the side in a safe location where it can dry undisturbed. Next, I'm gonna grab my It's a Celebration stamp set by Pink and Main, where I'll be using that top sentiment of It's a Celebration for the main sentiment of my card. I'm getting everything lined up in my mini Misty, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab my Magic Anti-Static brush as I will be doing some heat embossing later, and this little brush really helps a lot for some clean embossing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reach for my Versifying Claire Morning Mist Pigment ink. What I love about using pigment inks when I want to heat emboss is the ink stays nice and wet for a very long time. So that's gonna make it really great for catching all of that embossing powder when I'm ready to pour it on top. I don't have to worry about the ink drying out too much. It's just gonna be a perfect match when it comes to crafting. So I'm stamping a couple times just to make sure I get a really good impression of the stamp and it's covered entirely. So now that I'm all stamped and ready to go, I am going to use some clear embossing powder by Pink and Main because that's really gonna help keep that light gray color and it's going to also allow me to do some alcohol marker coloring on top of my image. And because that pigment ink that I'm using is not really alcohol marker safe at all, so using an embossing powder with it kind of traps that ink under the embossing powder and I'll be able to do some Copic marker coloring on top of of that. So I'm going to go ahead and get it all heat set. Of course this is sped up just so you don't have to totally watch the entire drying process. So let's get into some Copic marker coloring. I'm laying down my first layer of marker which is BG01 on the leftmost portion of my image and then I'm going to go in with some V12 and sort of begin the process of blending that into my blue color that I'm using. So I'm just kind of pushing and pulling back and forth to try and get a decent blend between the two colors. The next color I'm going to be pulling in is my RV21 and this is going to be kind of the center portion of the banner and then we will blend it into some YR02, just kind of pushing and pulling the colors back and forth. As you can see, I'm going back to that RV21 to get into that orange color. And then I'm gonna finish off with some Y11, doing my best to blend that into the YR02 color. 
and that's going to be the last of our coloring so we're ready to die cut it out with the coordinating stamps so i've got that all ready to go as well i love that pink and main always has coordinating stamps for all of their die cut images it just really helps those of us who may not love fussy cutting um, so I've got that all ready to go on top of my colored up image. So I'm going ahead, I of course put some mint tape on top of my die cut to get it all secured. And we are going to go ahead and process it through my die cutting machine just to get that one image all ready to go for our card. So as you will see, we've got our sentiment all die cut out and ready to go for the project that we're creating together. Next, let's use this aqua color from the Spring Glitter Paper Pack and get a portion die cut with the mod stitched rectangles. I'm pulling the second largest die and this is going to end up functioning as a frame for the birthday candles stenciled portion that we had die cut out earlier. So I've got that all secured with some mint tape. A little forewarning, the glitter paper doesn't really hold a tack very well with many tape that I've tried. So you might kind of just have to do your best to hold it in place. Then I'm going to be using this striped pattern from the Happy Paper Pack and all the colors on this striped paper coordinate perfectly with the card. I'm pulling in the largest die from the stitched rectangle set one, which is perfectly A2 sized. It's going to cut four and a quarter by five and a half and it's going to work as a perfect background to our card since that's the size that I'm going for. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything lined up in my die cutting sandwich and I will go ahead and get that all processed through. Now I have an A2 card base ready to go, so I'm taking some Ultra Bond liquid adhesive and placing it on the front portion of the card base. I'm gonna go ahead and then take that striped panel that we just die cut a couple seconds ago and get that into its position. Now I'm going to use my two mod stitched rectangle panels and get those ready as well. On the smallest birthday candles panel, I'm going to use my Ultra Bond adhesive and get this adhered to my glitter layer. Now, just like that low tack tape, the glitter paper can be a little resistant to adhesives. So what I'd like to do is bring in an oversized acrylic block that I keep in my stash, and this help applies a nice even pressure to the panel if I press it down for a couple seconds. And it gets my item all ready to go, so now it's ready to put the Ultra Bond adhesive on the back of the glitter layer which I can then layer on top of my card. Now I'm just going to use that liquid adhesive to my advantage by using it to kind of shift my image around to make sure it's in its perfect placement. It really gives me time to fidget around a little bit with it to make sure it's exactly where I want it to be. And then I'm going to pull in that acrylic block once again to apply some pressure and make sure that this is going to be ready to go nice and dried for me shortly. Now I will be using foam tape as well for my sentiment and you're going to see me get all of my pieces into place. I try my best to use nice long pieces whenever possible. To be honest, it's just easier to use the bigger pieces because I don't have to fidget around with them too much. But of course, I always find myself cutting smaller pieces just to make sure that my image is going to be nice and secured onto my project. So I'm getting all of those nicely into place, trimming off some very tiny bits as I can see right now, but it's because that little end that trails off, you just gotta get some nice thin pieces for that. So I'm gonna go ahead, kind of get an idea of where I want it to be placed, take all of the backing off of the foam tape, and then I'll go ahead and get my image pressed onto my card right in the center. And oh, I just love how it pops. That foam tape raises it nicely off the project, just about a 1 16th of an inch, but it really gives some nice depth. I'm gonna then go in with some rainbow glitter enamel dots, and I'm going to use the colors that you can find in this card. So you're gonna see some blues, some pinks, some purple. There's also some grays that are included and some orange. It really pulls in all of the colors that you're going to see in this card. And that's kind of what I go with when I use my embellishments, is that I like to either pull in the colors that you are already seeing in the card, or I'm just gonna go with a neutral and go with a white or a black. 
And there you have it. Our card is all completed and ready to be sent off to a loved one who's definitely in need of being recognized for a celebration. So I hope you love this card as much as I do, especially with all the fun birthday colors that are included. I want to take a moment just to thank you very much for crafting with me today and for being with me here on the Creative Scrapbooker YouTube channel. Once again, I'm Justin Adkins, and I hope to see you around soon. Thank you so much and have a great day. Goodbye.